So I am um, I'm making my wedding dress. I really want it to be like, <sighs> kind of like zip off pants. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to the Knack for Adventure YouTube channel. My name is AJ. Now, there are two sides to the Knack for Adventure YouTube channel. We've got one side, which is all outdoor action sports, adventures, skiing, mountain biking, fishing, camping, hiking, all of those. And the other side is sustainability because I think we as humans really need to understand our impact that we have on this earth around us. And because we like to adventure and spend time outside, I think adventure and sustainability really do go in hand. Those two themes are just very important in our life. And so when we got married, we really wanted to bring those two aspects together. We ended up getting married outside. It was beautiful. All of the decorations we had were made from the natural surroundings or they were shop secondhand. So all the glassware, plates, frames, the wedding arch was made from a couple of trees from my parents' backyard. All of the flora that was used for boutonnieres and bouquets were all kind of foraged from our parents' properties. And it was just such a special way to incorporate things that we really, really value. And another huge way that I wanted to incorporate sustainability into our wedding was by making my own wedding dress. Now, sustainability was a huge piece in making this decision, but a lot of it was also just wanting to have that experience of creating something that I could be proud of and would represent me on my wedding day. So first up, like any project, I had to get some inspiration. So I had been looking on Pinterest. Most of it was like tight bodices, a lot of textures like tulle and lace, a little bit like Renaissance mixed with fairy princess, a little bit like piratey, and also like space princess. It was definitely heavily inspired by Padme's wedding dress from Attack of the Clones, just with her veil and the lace and the color. It was just everything I could have dreamt of. Once I had an idea of what I wanted, I started perusing the thrift shops and secondhand stores to find either one of two things. A, a dress that fit me really well that I liked the shape and silhouette of in order for me to make a pattern from it. Or B, a dress where I could use fabric from to make into my dress. And that's just because I want to source as many things as I could secondhand. And then my prayers to the thrift gods were answered when I found this perfect little number that just like fit me like a glove. Or should I say wedding dress? <laughs> I bought this dress at the Goodwill. I think it was supposed to be like 20 bucks and he accidentally charged me like $4. So great deal. It fits me perfect. I, I mean, I like the style, but the reason I got it is because it fits me like perfectly and I can kind of use it to make another pattern off of. So it's kind of like short, which is kind of cute. I don't know. I can maybe make it like a little bit shorter. So this is kind of my vision. An off the shoulder moment, a bunch of lace. I think with different fabrics, it'll hang differently and look differently. So I'm not like getting set on the silhouette because I'm not crazy about it, but that's okay. We're gonna start this out. Now, remember when I said that I was just gonna use that thrifted dress to make a pattern? Yeah, so after trying on that dress a couple of times, I kind of just realized that it was too perfect to not use for the real deal. My intention was to have a detachable skirt so I could have the long dress for the ceremony and then a shorter dress for the reception. Shortly after I got this dress, I realized that there was already hooks sewn into the midsection where I could attach a skirt if I wanted to. And I was like, you know what? It is meant to be, this is the base of my dress. So all I would have to do is create a skirt from scratch, add longer sleeves, shorten the dress, create a veil and add some finishing touches. And then this dress would be the one of my dreams. The skirt. To start out the skirt, I started draping fabric around the dress. Now, I really wanted a lot of fun texture and layers, so I ended up getting three different fabrics. On the bottom, I had just a super simple white kind of silky fabric. And then in the middle, I had this off-white lace. 
and on top it was just a white tulle. And the tulle fabric had some really fun, beautiful floral, kind of sparkly appliques at the bottom. So I just had to line that up in the middle of the dress and then I worked my way to the back. After it was draped to create a silhouette that I wanted, I pinned the three fabrics together and took it off the mannequin. In order to create the detachable skirt, I had to have something sturdy enough to sew little hooks on. And so I sandwiched the three fabrics in between a ribbon that I folded over them. And I just did a single stitch and it held together really well. After I had sewn that, I had cut the skirt to my desired length to match up with the tool appliques. The last thing I had to do on the skirt was just attach some hooks, but we're gonna do a couple other things and then come back to that. The dress. <laughs> Now the dress was already pretty perfect to begin with. I didn't have to alter the fit in any way. However, I did want to change a couple of things. First, the dress had some lace detail at the bottom and I wanted to make sure to keep that just because it did match the off the shoulder sleeves as well as the center lace section. So I just unstitched that to keep it intact. That way I could reattach it once I had hemmed the dress. I was debating on whether to put the lace under or over the hem, but ultimately decided to put it over the hem, just like the original dress. It did take me quite a bit just to perfectly sew and stitch where the lace was, but it ended up looking really nice once I cut off that excess. There's so many threads everywhere. And it's hard to see because it's all the same color. Here's a little before and here's an after. Now chopping the skirt definitely made it way more my style and perfect for dancing. <laughs> Another way that I altered the dress was by adding longer sleeves onto the off the shoulder moment that was going on. <laughs> when constructing the dress, I really wanted to be mindful of how much fabric waste I had. I was super excited with how the sleeves turned out because they were the excess fabric that I had from the skirt. Because of the handkerchief silhouette, I really didn't have that much fabric waste. I think the only leftovers I had was from when I cut off the scalloped edges and even those scraps I like kept in order to use as stuffing for other projects. I do remember one of the hardest parts of this project was putting some ribbon on the raw edge of the sleeves in order to help prevent fraying. And because there were four long sides to the sleeves, it was just like very repetitive. And <laughs> the, the fourth one is definitely way better than the first one. I was just hoping that there was enough movement in the sleeves that it wouldn't really be noticeable. I will say that adding the ribbon also kind of made it a little bit stiffer on the sleeves and it was just a really fun shape. <laughs> The veil. I'm definitely a hat person. I'm usually wearing some sort of beanie or baseball cap or bandana. And I wanted to make sure that my veil kind of matched that part of my personality. And again, I was definitely looking at Padme Amidala's wedding dress, specifically the veil. The veil is so cool. I ended up making my own pattern to try and imitate it. And it was comprised of four parts. So we got two kind of like semi-circle halves for the side, and then a rectangle down the center, and then the main part of the veil in the back. And I ended up using that off-white lace fabric that I used for the sleeves and the skirt. And I did have a little bit of that tool left as well, so I sewed it on the back to really mimic the texture and the layers of the skirt. The veil ended up being a little bit heavier than I anticipated, so I did have to use a little bit of elastic to put at the base of the head in order to help it stay on.
finishing touches. The skirt ended up being not quite as opaque as I wanted it to be, so I ended up making a slip so that you couldn't see the shorter skirt underneath. It was just a really simple rectangle pattern with a slit and an elastic waistband. To complete this whole look, I also found some really awesome like secondhand white lace-up boots, which they definitely had a couple variations before reaching their final form. So I painted the boots all white, and I'm not super crazy about it, especially with the white ribbon. Instead, I have the original laces that I'm gonna try and dye with tea. So hopefully that'll be like a nice, more like a light brown color, and it won't look as like white as it does now. Spoiler alert, the tea dyeing did not work at all. <laughs> so I ended up just getting some brown cord that I turned into laces and to match the laces, I painted the base of the boot brown. I loved the more like Western look that these boots gave and they ended up looking amazing with the short version of my dress. Now I left the most tedious task for last, which is sewing all the little attachments so I could put the skirt onto the dress. So the dress already had the hooks on it, but I just had to line up each of the eyes of the hook and eye latches onto the skirt. This took forever. There was probably like 20 that I had to individually hand sew on. But like anything that takes time, this process was well worth it to have my dream zip off pants style wedding dress. Here's a peek of the final dress before I show you what it looked like on the day of the ceremony. this project just really meant a lot to me. You know, I, I think it represented me as an individual just because I took something what was already there and I used my creativity to make it into something of my own. It was challenging, it made me think, it made me have patience, it made me in charge of it, but at the same time, I kind of had to surrender to whatever it would become. And I was responsible for the waste that it created, so it made me be really resourceful with my fabric. And while saving money wasn't really my main motivator, I would say that this final bridal look, including shoes, dress, skirt, veil, all of it, it was probably less than $150. And this also included the jewelry that I made to go along with the dress, which I am wearing right now. The amount of time I devoted to this project really made me appreciate it. And I'm, I'm just really proud about how it turned out. You know, my grandma was this really amazing seamstress. And so whenever I sat down to work on this project, I tried to do everything in my power to just channel her energy and I'd like to think that she would also be proud of it. And if you're watching this and thinking about creating your own wedding dress or just any clothes in general, I, I say go for it. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like and subscribe to our YouTube channel as well as check out our other socials for more outdoor and sustainable content. Thanks so much for watching and keep on crushing. Ethereal? Ethereal? I don't know what that word is. Ethereal. I don't know what the word is. Ethereal? Yeah.